Hello, I'm David Rose, and thanks for stopping by for this Washington's Most Wanted Update, a look at the cases featured this weekend in partnership with Crime Stoppers. And we begin with the hunt for an accused killer who Renton police say is armed and dangerous. This guy's been on the streets for way too long. Take a look at O'Shea Williams. The 22-year-old already has a considerable criminal history, including convictions for robbery and illegal guns. Now King County prosecutors have charged him with murder in the first degree. This is video from the crime scene back on March 10th in the parking lot of the Formula One Fast Lube on Rainier Avenue South, where police found 21-year-old Jim Rout murdered in his vehicle. Renton police say that Williams basically stalked Rout that day before shooting him. The suspect in this case drove around the block several times uh, uh, around the victim before he approached the victim's car on foot and shot him dead. O'Shea Williams is five feet, five inches tall, and weighs approximately 130 pounds. Police say he's known to frequent the Seattle area and again, should be considered armed and dangerous. Please call 911 if you spot him. If you know where to find him, submit an anonymous tip to Crime Stoppers of Puget Sound through the P3 Tips app that you can download to your cell phone for free or call the hotline. Again, it's always anonymous. You will never be asked to give your name. You will get a $1,000 cash reward as soon as they put the cuffs on O'Shea. A heads up to those of you living in Tacoma and Spokane. A convicted felon wanted for assault might be in either of your cities. So keep a lookout for DeAsia Walter. She has a tattoo below her left eye, as well as one on her forearm that says loyal. A warrant for her arrest was issued in Okanagan County for assault second degree, attempting to elude a police vehicle, reckless driving, heroin possession, and resisting arrest. She also has a pending charge in Grant County for assault for domestic violence. The 18-year-old has already been convicted of assault with a deadly weapon, robbery second degree, car theft, and malicious mischief. Now, she's been seen around 38th Street in Tacoma, and she was also last known to live on North Cincinnati Street in Spokane. DeAsia Walter is 5'2", 137 pounds. If you spot her, call 911 immediately. She is known to run from police and may be armed with a 10-inch knife on her left leg. It's hard to believe, but next weekend marks six months since a much-loved and popular young man with a very bright future was shot and killed in cold blood right in front of his family's Rainier Beach home in Seattle. Tonight, detectives want to be very clear that they still have no solid reason right now for why 18-year-old Connor Dassel Holland was murdered. The memorial his friends built in front of his home is still maintained. It's showing he will not be forgotten. The night he was killed, Connor was moving his family's car that was parked across the street to in front of his home. He pulled around the block, drove down South Fletcher Street and then turned right on 51st Avenue South. That's when police say someone in another vehicle opened fire, shooting him in the head. Connor crashed the vehicle into some rocks across the street. Now this surveillance video shows the suspect's vehicle racing away after the shooting and then turned down around the corner. Seattle police homicide detectives still need to know what kind of vehicle that is, who was in it, and why this happened. None of the leads so far have been right. All information that's come in through social media or any other source has not panned out. We do not have a suspect in this case, which tells me there's somebody running loose out there right now responsible for his death. We need that information. Any detail that you give us will be looked into, I guarantee it. And right now there is a $6,000 cash reward offered for the anonymous tip that leads to an arrest in his case. You can submit it through the P3 Tips app on your cell phone or call the hotline 1-800-222-TIPS. Tonight, the King County Sheriff's Office and the U.S. Secret Service are hoping you can help find four suspects who have federal warrants for their arrest. So take a look at Lysandre Dowell Ennis, Solomon Leverett, Elias Graham, and Donve Adams. All of them have been indicted in federal court for bank fraud and aggravated ID theft. Detectives say the suspects are part of a multi-state counterfeit check scheme. It's a complex investigation in which the suspects are accused of using the stolen payroll account information from multiple small businesses to create fake checks. We're talking about over a million dollars worth of fraudulent charges. Uh, so this is a very significant loss for the people that are involved in this and these suspects were well calculated in what they were doing. If we don't get them off the street, they're gonna to continue to uh, commit crimes. They're gonna to continue to victimize people by taking identities and other things that they're doing. 
Lissandre Dowell Ennis is 31 years old. Her criminal history started in 2007 with theft and assault fourth degree, and then continued with obstructing law enforcement, identity theft, theft second degree, two convictions for first degree criminal trespass, two for third degree theft, and reckless driving, which was pled down from a DUI. Solomon Leverett is 37 years old. His criminal history dates back to 2007 and includes two convictions for robbery second degree, two for car theft, as well as forgery and theft second degree. Elias Graham is 20 years old. He just has some driving offenses on his record. And then there's 28-year-old Donvey Adams. He's got a felony criminal history dating back to 2006. It started with robbery second degree and includes robbery first degree, assault second degree, domestic violence assault second degree, strangulation, and domestic violence assault third degree substantial pain, attempted theft, and obstructing a law enforcement officer. That robbery first degree conviction stems from a case that I featured back in 2012 when he pistol whipped a couple putting them in the hospital. He was washing his most wanted capture number 303 after he was caught by a SWAT team in Kent thanks to a tip from one of you. Now detectives are hoping you can help find him again. So if you have any information on his whereabouts or the locations of any of these other federal fugitives, please submit an anonymous tip to Crime Stoppers of Puget Sound through the P3 Tips app on your cell phone or call 1-800-222-TIPS. You will never be asked to give your name. You will get a cash reward of up to $1,000 if you give a tip that leads to the arrest of any of these suspects. A family in Pierce County is grieving tonight after 34-year-old Jonathan Rupert, a father, was left for dead by a hit-and-run driver on a county road near Ording. Neighbors along Orville Road East near the collision between Kapowson and 264th Street East are urged by detectives to scour their own video surveillance, looking for images of any suspicious vehicles. The subject left a party, and there were a lot of people there, and then they found him deceased out in the roadway a short time later. Nobody heard any type of accident, nobody saw anything, and the only reason why he was found is because a second car came down the road. So we were looking for any type of information that anybody has out there because there's no pieces left of the car, and there was no sound, and there are no witnesses. So this, this point is really a hit and run who done it because we have absolutely nothing. So we're reaching out, hoping somebody can give us some information. So this was just this past weekend. Jonathan Rupert was a son, a father, and his family says he had a generous spirit. Watching his most wanted Steve Kiggin shows that with your help, detectives can narrow down a search for a suspect. Along this lonely stretch of road, just north of Lake Kapowson, is where a family suffering was born in the dead of night. Do the right thing. Give some family some closure. Those who knew and loved 34-year-old Jonathan Rupert say his smile would light up a room, but that brightness has faded, leaving this family in darkness. The Cartwrights were celebrating a birthday last Saturday near Ording. They say Rupert left early to meet his girlfriend, but he never made it. Don't do what a coward does. Don't hide. Around 10.30 that night, Pierce County Sheriff's deputies responded to a 911 call and found a man who appeared to have been struck by a hit and run driver in the road. But that driver and the vehicle was nowhere to be found. There was a fireman first on the scene and uh, I want to thank him very, very, very much. Kale Cartwright says he's Rupert's stepfather and he says Rupert was part of a family that forged a brotherhood beyond birthright. There was a story. Remember what happened when, when, when his uh, handlebars went down? Oh, he scraped yeah. his knee? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then he went over the handlebars. Yeah, he went over the handlebars. But now Rupert's family holds on to his warm and loving spirit. It's a comfort they say John shared easily with most anyone he met. He had a heart of gold, you know. If you knew the guy, you'd love the guy. So again, Pierce County Sheriff detectives are asking neighbors along Oroville Road East near the collision between Kapowson and 264th Street East to scour their home video surveillance. Look for any images of Jonathan or any suspicious vehicles from last weekend. If you have it, please upload it to Crime Stoppers of Tacoma Pierce County through the P3 Tips app on your smartphone that you can download for free. It's anonymous and you'll get a cash reward of up to $1,000 if it leads to an arrest in Rupert's case. You can also call the hotline with any tips. That number, 1-800-222-8477.
I always like to update you on our cases whenever possible, and I have some good news and some bad news tonight for a food delivery driver after he was carjacked at gunpoint in Mount Lake Terrace. Last weekend, I showed you this surveillance video taken when two suspects approached the Uber driver after he dropped off some food, pointed a gun at him, and demanded his keys and cell phone. Then they stole his Honda with his baby's car seat in the back. Well, early last Saturday morning, that stolen car was spotted by a trooper in the Kelso area of Cowlitz County. Unfortunately, it was damaged during a high-speed pursuit, reaching speeds of 120 miles an hour, and it's not drivable. Well, Cowlitz County Sheriff's deputies identified one of the three suspects inside as 20-year-old Jamal Osmond from Kent. He appeared Monday in Snohomish County Court on a robbery charge. Mount Lake Terrace police say he's the suspect in the blue shorts there on the right and that he confessed to the carjacking. However, police say he was not helpful in identifying the second suspect there on the left who truly terrified the victim when he pulled out that gun. He was actually afraid that they might shoot him. They threatened to shoot him twice. And so he does appear calm, but this actually deeply affected him. Yeah, he was worried about these guys coming to his house, and that's understandable. It's terrifying. Detective Hatchell headed to Cowlitz County this week and served a search warrant on that vehicle to look for evidence as he continues to put together the case. What he needs is help from you with the name of this gunman. So if you know who he is, maybe you know he runs around with that other suspect. Any information, you will stay anonymous. You will get a cash reward of up to $1,000. Call the hotline or submit his name and photos through the P3 Tips app on your cell phone. And thanks to you, a convicted domestic violence offender who's accused of biting a woman and stalking her is behind bars. This photo shows Anthony Harris grinning from the backseat of a patrol car after King County Sheriff's detectives arrested him at the Coronado Springs Apartments in White Center on Monday. We had a great tip that came in through Crime Stoppers that told us our suspect, Anthony Harris, who was wanted on a $150,000 bail warrant for felony violation of no contact order was at an address in White Center. Not only did they provide the address and the unit number he's known to hang out at, they provided us a license plate to a vehicle that he is known to be either the passenger in or driving often. Uh, so the detective arrived. As soon as they pulled into the parking lot, the vehicle that was approaching them, he checked the license plate, and it happened to be that exact same license plate we received on that tip. Uh, he stopped the car. The passenger in the car was, in fact, Anthony Harris, and he was arrested without incident. I think it's important to remind people that, yes, any specific information is extremely helpful for us to catch these people, but when you can provide something down to a license plate of the vehicle that he was in, that is a huge, huge help for us because saying an apartment complex, sometimes these apartment complexes are enormous and they have multiple units, hundreds of units and thousands of people that stay in them. Um, so the fact that they provided down to the license plate really allowed the detective to get in the area and he was planning on just waiting outside for a little while and within seconds of pulling in, it just so happened he was coming out in that vehicle. So it worked out well for us. Detectives say Harris was wanted for violating a domestic violence protection order by biting a woman during an assault and then stalking her. He's being held tonight in the Regional Justice Center in Kent on $150,000 bail. And his arrest brings the total number of fugitives you have helped catch since 2008 when we launched the show to 1,177. Well, that's a look at some of the cases featured this weekend. To see all of them, join me later tonight on Washington's Most Wanted at 11 o'clock on Q13 Fox. Set your recorder if you can't stay up that late. It also airs tomorrow night a little bit earlier at 10 o'clock on Joe TV and at 10.30 p.m. on Fox TV stations in Spokane, Yakima, and the Tri-Cities. And together, all of us can make sure that these criminals have nowhere left to hide.